Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's a Wednesday morning and of course uh, I always like to call it hump day. The weekend really starts uh, on this day for me. Good morning once again. I am Osaogi Ogbonwan. How are you, Aneta? I'm fine. Good morning to you and good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Great to have you here. And of course, uh, coming up on the breakfast this morning, the Benue State Governor Samuel Otom meets with President Muhammadu Buhari three days after the attack on his convoy. The governor says he has made recommendations about security to the president. The question is, who really tried to kill Governor Otom and how can we best keep Nigeria secure? Also coming up on the breakfast. A woman goes to a Belgian hospital seeking help with giving birth, but returns with a destroyed cervix. Her sister-in-law is also paralyzed by the same hospital. We'll be talking to Ajima Bole about her ordeal in Belgium. And of course, uh, that's a conversation that we're looking forward to this morning because of how big that story is. We're also going to be reviewing the newspapers this morning and telling you about two things that took place today in history. Um, one of them is uh, with sport and how a career ended in a very shameful manner. Good morning once again and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. And I am Aneta Felix. Good to have you join us again. Let's begin with the World Happiness Report. As you may know, Finland has been named as the happiest country in the world for the fourth year in a row. The Happiness Report measures and uses subjective well-being to track and explain the quality of lives all over the world. The 2021 report also used data to trace the size and distribution of the happiness impacts of COVID-19. Back here in Africa, Nigeria is the continent's second happiest country after the island of Mauritius. Mauritius placed 44th in the global ranking and Nigeria came 59th. Uh, well, um, I'm not sure, you know, how that played out, you know, to be honest. And a lot of people um, also didn't agree when they saw that report. Um, no one was arguing with Finland. Um, same way nobody would argue if it was uh, Australia or Sweden or anything mm -hmm. there. But seeing Nigeria in second place in Africa, um, you know, a lot of people didn't agree. People even said, oh, maybe it was rigged. Um, maybe the reporter, whoever it is, was bribed. You know, but I asked myself, really, I, I wasn't surveyed. How did you come up with this report? Yeah, you know, so I think they, they have ways that they carry out their analysis, you know, and eventually come up with, you know, these reports every now and then. Um, it was, um, you know, many, many years ago, a couple of years ago, that Nigeria was the happiest country in the world. Um, you know, but if you ask yourself, you know, how different we are, you know, from that time, you know, what, what really is the difference between that time and now? Um, there's, you know, a lot a of lot people, there's, a, there's so much that Definitely. has changed, you know, and it, it also really tells about the Nigerian attitude to, in the face of all the turmoil and all the, you know, hardship and the, you know, increased uh, petrol prices, electricity prices, cost of living is skyrocketing, inflation, um, and all of that, you know, happened at the same time. But Nigerians, you know, find a way to stay alive and be, you know, resilient somehow, some way, you know, in, in, in the midst of all of that. And so um, it's maybe one of, our, you know, I've always described it as one of our best um, um, attributes and also one of our flaws. And the reason, you know, I would say it's one of our flaws is because it, 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 it is what limits the Nigerian from actually demanding for better. That's what Fela called suffering and smiling. and smiling. Yes, you know, so so because we don't get to demand, because we don't also get to realize that we deserve better and, you know, certain levels in healthcare, with education, with security, you know, one of the things we're going to be talking about this morning is the uh, governor of Benue State going to see the president and making recommendations with regard to security, which, you know, doesn't even sound normal um, in, in any other place, you know, but that's what is happening here. Um, but you know, we've gotten used to, you know, these things as normal. The, it rained yesterday in Lagos, mm -hmm. um, sometime in the afternoon. Since then, I haven't had electricity. You know, for, for me yeah, as a Lagosian, high. exactly, for me as a Lagosian, that is normal. It's you normal, know, Because, yes. you know, people will joke about it and say, oh, you know, whenever it rains, the EKDC wants the, the wires to dry first, you know, before they turn the power back on. I was having a video on. conversation with a friend yesterday and there was light. And I asked, how do you have light while it's raining. That's how much we've been conditioned to believe that we don't deserve certain things in certain conditions. So we, we deserve them, but we have gotten used to the fact that we wouldn't have them. 
And so years and years and years will pass and we still have not been able to get ourselves to a place where it is normal to have electricity. It is normal to wake up in the morning and you have electricity to, you know, to carry on mm -hmm. with your life. Um, I woke up this morning, I had to turn on the gen at 5 a.m., which is you know, something that I, I personally hate. Um, I hate the sound of, I hate the idea of a generator in oh. the first place. Um, but I had to turn it out at 5 a.m. so I can get myself ready for work. Um, but for me, that is normal, you know, and, and driving to work this morning, the roads, you know, you know, crazy here and there. There's spots of uh, Lucky Phase 1 that you know, gets flooded immediately, you know, it rains. Mm -hmm. And that is normal. That is what we live with here. Um, so that is the Nigerian for you. At the end of all of it, at the end of all that stress, at the end of being in traffic for five hours, at the end of missing your flights because of traffic, um, somewhere on Admiralty, Admiralty Way yesterday, um, a, a truck decided to deliver um, building materials to some, you know, building uh, and parked across the road, blocked the road. No questions asked. No questions, no explanations, and nothing. There for just hours. blocked the road. And so every other person who had to take that lane now had to join the incoming lane. And that is normal. That is, that's the kind of madness that we see as normal. And so when you go home after all of that, after going through all of that, oh, you go stress. home, you, you, know, you, you relax, you watch TV, you have a you know, good laugh. Our comedians are making a lot of money because Nigerians need to laugh. Um, but I don't see that as something to celebrate, really. Mm. Um, placing us as the, as the second happiest you know, in, in Africa, to me, really... It just masks a lot, a lot of our, yeah. our suffering, really. Feels but like, really, uh, let, let, let's make this personal now. Are you happy? Ooh. <laughs> and that's a big question, really. Because uh, asking myself that question, we're second happiest people in the world. If you ask your friends, take 10 of your friends and ask them that question, the answer would be in, in the negative. Lots of people want to leave this country. Lots of people want to find better lives for themselves. And even people like one of our guests this morning who left the country in search of a better life doesn't have a great story to tell today. So really, how do we escape from our circumstances? So, so there's, there's a lot of ways that a Nigerian would answer that question. The same way they always respond when they say, how's business? They say, oh, we thank God. Yes, oh, we thank God. You know, the, the, the Nigerian would always try to... Nagodo. Nagodo. <laughs> the Nigerian would always try to um, continue to speak positive about, you know, how they are. And so if, if you ask a regular Nigerian, are you happy? Most times they'll say, yeah, I'm okay. Um, things aren't so good, but I'm okay, you know, and, and, you know, there's certain, you know, when they say every person is going through their own personal struggles and their per personal battles, mm -hmm. um, they may not be in the best place, you know, for themselves at that moment, but they would always try to hold on to the parts of, you know, their lives at that and time that are good. they offer hope. Um, yes. You know, Regardless. So, so the answer you know, most Nigerians will, you know, give is yes, you know, because... At that moment, they would look out for the things that they are, you know, excited about, the things that bring them a little bit of happiness. They have a roof over their heads. They have one child. They're married. Uh, they're, you know, they're healthy, um, which are things that, you know, everyone should appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, yes, everybody will say, yes, I am happy. But if you, if you, you know, reach to the really the core of every Nigerian, a lot of people are unhappy. Lots of um, discontent, you know, job dissatisfaction, lots of things like that. But the stats say we're the second happiest in the world. Or in, yes. Yeah, in the world. Yes, we are. The second happiest in Africa, actually. In Africa. Uh, Finland is the uh, first in the world. Yes. Let's move away from happiness now to um, other things that aren't so exciting. Um, well, you know, one reason, once again, why a lot of Nigerians, you know, deal with poor service here and there, deal with, you know, very, very dilapidated systems and still, you know, remain second happiest in Africa. Nigerian airlines are used to delays. There's hardly a week when you don't hear of planes departing hours behind schedule. Uh, the sad news is that things don't seem to be getting better. I'll share with you a tweet, you know, that I also saw yesterday. The tweet says, My wife slept in the police station yesterday because she arrived Lagos past midnight from Abuja, and the police refused to accept her boarding pass as a valid reason. A flight scheduled to fly initially uh, in the morning and then moved to 9.30 p.m., and then again, moved to 11.30 p.m. Um, that's, you know, w was uh, her experience. Eventually, she slept in the police station because, of course, she had broken the curfew. Um, and she was, of course, moving around when there was a curfew in Lagos at that time. Um, not, most Nigerian police officers wouldn't care about things like that. A lot of, um, you know, Twitter users also reacted to it. 
Uh, there's people, uh, someone like uh, Fumi or Yajogu, who's had this to say. She, um, she tweeted, please don't book the Abuja to Lagos 11.30 p.m. flight for a particular airline. Uh, falsely advertised at 7.30 p.m. Every night, they pretend the flight has been moved to 8.30 p.m. and then 9.50 p.m. Then every night, it eventually leaves at 11.30 p.m. And there's a curfew in Lagos. Don't say I didn't tell you. That's what she tweeted. Another person, CC underscore INY, tweeted, or more, yesterday's 7.30 p.m. flight landed at 1.30 a.m. in Lagos. The long wait, discomfort, and extra money spent to lodge in a hotel after curfew, so stressful. Mm. Um, so th these are some of the, the, the lapses in the system that we run here in Nigeria. It's not, it's not, it, it affects everyone. And, 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 and most times it's because Nigerians don't have that system where an airline like that can be sued and will pay. Mm -hmm. We don't have a judicial system that we are confident enough to, to, you know, to walk into and then, or to approach, and we are sure that we'll get justice. Um, we also don't have a system that lets police officers understand that once in a while it's okay to um, you know, know that people will break the curfew because of you know, uh, certain reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's you know, the environment that we live in. And why will she spend the night in the police station? Why is she being arrested you know, okay. because she broke a curfew? This, this, this story hits very close to home because I know lots of people who've had terrible experiences and missed opportunities because they missed their flights. Okay, for example, just yesterday, a friend of mine was scheduled to travel to Delta. He had booked his flight, he left in the morning, stayed, stayed in the airport, waited, because he told, he was told that the flight was postponed, so he had to wait and wait and wait. And then he called later at night that he was going back home. Like, you're supposed to have been in Delta hours ago. He said the flight was cancelled and the airline was refunding all their tickets or refunding their, their fee. So someone that was supposed to have left Lagos early in the morning, waited in the, in the I don't know why the word hospital keeps coming to my mind, waited in the, in the airport for a long time, only to be told that the flight was cancelled. So he had to come back a whole day wasted. We have no sense of timing. We have no sense. Like, these things that should be common. And in other countries, like you mentioned, you could sue and they could, you know, tell you your next, your next few flights are free. Your next few flights are on yeah. us. But nothing like that here. You know, these airlines, they have the upper hand yeah. and really no system to it, make sure it, that It might work. exist here, you know, but the, the, the timing, the stress, the legal fees that you have to pay, mm -hmm. you know, and go through all of that might just, you know, a lot Emails of Emails back and forth, phone need. calls. Um, and, and there's another thing I saw online People who, you know, were alleging that what they do is they, you book a ticket, let's say, for 10 a.m., and they send you a personal message and tell you your flight has been postponed to, like, 2 p.m. But you go to the airport, maybe you were already there early. You find out that that 10 a.m. flight was actually leaving, that what they do is maybe there was an important uh, client or something, an important passenger, and they sell your ticket to that person and move your flight. Isn't that just the height of corruption? Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Um, and of course, uh, we don't have a railway system also that uh, should be an alternative to taking you know, flights, sadly. All right. Um, well, uh, so much to talk about this morning. We will delve you know, deeper into the uh, Ogbole story, a woman who lost her cervix um, you know, because of uh, medical malpractice or however you can describe it. And of course, a surrogate mother who also tried to step in to help her have a baby eventually left the hospital paralyzed. It's one of the things that we're going to be talking about this morning on The Breakfast. Uh, of course, uh, Governor Tom meeting President Buhari would also come up as part of our discussions. But before that, it's time for Off the Press. What major news stories have made the headlines this morning? We'll be sharing them with you after the short break. Do stay with us.